What's up, guys? Back March the 25th, I believe it was, I did a TVC power hour on um, fixing bad data that, that the field crew brought in, and I showed you guys how to fix it. So um, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to fix bad data that the crews have went out, did some surveying, brought some data in, they screwed up, you got to fix it. So first things first. Okay, let me set this up for you. So basically, let's say the crew goes out and uh, they didn't have any control. So they didn't have any GPS. So they just went out there 5,000, 5,000 and set up backsided with the robot, got some shots, brought it back into you, said, here you go. You're looking at it. The client says it needs to be on state plane. What are you going to do? Okay. That's one scenario. Another scenario could be that the guys went out and uh, it's supposed to be on like <clears throat> Mississippi East and they set their data collectors up Mississippi West. Well, the problem that you have when that happens, especially for us that use CSV files, when you bring a CSV file into a projection, so let's say the project's supposed to be Mississippi East, you bring it into Mississippi West. What happens is, is that coordinate for, from that CSV file gets brought into the data collector and Latin long is created from that. Okay, from there on out, that project is locked down because that Latin long, no matter you switch it east, west, whatever, that Latin long's wrong. Okay, because they brought it into the wrong projection using a CSV. Now, if you bring a Latin long in and you bring it into the wrong projection, say for instance with your GPS, you go out and you shoot something, you've got it in Mississippi West, you want it in Mississippi East. It, real simple, you just go and change it in Data Collector, change it in Business Center, problem solved, not a big deal. The problem comes in is when you take and key in a coordinate or you import a coordinate in in the wrong projection, now you have a problem. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So what I've got is I've got some points I went out and collected at 5,000, 5,000, but I also had the same points I shot in with the GPS. So let's jump on the computer and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me bring these points in and I'll show you what's going on here. So I've got a project here called Scale Job. Let's bring that in. Okay, so here's my points. Now then, let's bring the points in um, in the right projection. When I bring this job in, it's going to bring them in. If you notice down here in the lower right, now it says Mississippi East because the, the GPS points I brought in are Mississippi East. Okay. So let's look and see where that's at. So if we look, let's see, let's go to, um, I believe it's under, is it CAD? Yes, CAD, layer management. Let's go to points. Let's make them red so we can see them. Let's close. Now then, what you'll notice is I've got my points that I shot in with my GPS just to show you what's going on here. They're up here in Mississippi. They're in the right place. They're in Mississippi East over here. Now, if you look, the other points, which I shot in with my total station at 5,000, 5,000, they're down in the Gulf of Mexico. That's a huge problem, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to turn this map off. So there's my points. So now what I need to do is I need to get these 5,000, 5,000 points back where they belong. Now in this case, you'd probably um, have somebody go out and shoot those two points with their GPS. Um, you need the correct coordinates in order to make this work, right? So however you need to go get those, you need to get the, the correct coordinates. Maybe you sent them the correct coordinates, they just keyed them into the wrong projection. That, that happens a lot, okay? I get those phone calls all the time. So let's look at what we need to do. So we're going to do what's called merge points. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to look. They were set up on 100. So if I select 100 and I go over here and I look at point number 2 is actually my 100, right? 
So I'm going to hold down my control. I'm going to select to. Now then, I'm going to go into survey. I'm going to go to merge points. I'm going to open up the merge points here. There's a little plus box over here on the right-hand side. You need to make sure you open that up. So where's my final destination? I want to move everything to point number two. So you can see it's selected. You can see how much it's going to move it right here. We're holding number two, so it's at zero. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to give me a vector line over there to it. So now we need to move the other point. We were set up on 100, backsiding 101, right? So I'm going to select 101, because now my azimuth line is going from 101 back over here to point number two, which is point of move. But actually, the point I backsided was point number one. So let's select it. Let's go back to merge points again. There again, we're going to open it back up, and I'm going to say my final point is number one. And I'm going to say OK. So there it is. So now there's my azimuth line. So I've merged those two. Now the big key to when you're messing around in Trimble Business Center is to look down here in the lower right hand corner. And I got on to Trimble about this, by, by the way, in the webinar. If you look down here in the lower right hand corner, there's this little bitty ball that says Recompute. Now you can either hit that ball, you can hit this ball up here at the top, or you can just hit F4 on the keyboard. And you can see that it did something, right? So it took my azimuth line away. And you're like, Robert, man, that didn't fix the problem. Yeah, we still have one more thing we need to do. If we go into Project Explorer and we look at our points and we go back and look, number two is where we were set up at. Number two had the 5,000, 5,000 coordinate. That is still hanging on. So what we need to do is go in here, grid, and you know what? Let's go to properties first. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, point number one, or I'm, I'm sorry, point number two is still saying north and east, 5,000, 5,000. That was keyed in. So that's kind of holding some weight. So let's get rid of it. Delete. If we look back down again, you're going to see this recompute ball has popped back up. So we're going to hit F4. Now then, if we zoom down and look, our points are fixed. So, but we still have one little issue we need to look at. So if we go down here and look, those two points... And let's say that the screw, the crew went out, and when they did this, they busted their rod height. That happens a lot too, right? So if you look, these are supposed to be the same point. So if we inverse in between these two, and we go from that one to that one, it says that our grid distance is 900 between the two. And our elevation is 1.54. So I can tell you what the elevation problem is. If we go back to our Project Explorer and we look at these points. Okay, there's our base right there. So there's our GPS point. That is our turned angle because it's merged together. Okay, that is our backside point. Now, here's another thing to show you so you can look and see. Once I select one of these lines, see I selected, that's my backside, 2 to 1. See how it's lit up? If I say base, so there's my base point with my GPS to point number one. If I go two to one there, you can see same thing again, right? Two to one, there's my prism, this is lit up. So if I go down here and look, so two to one is fine because two to one, that is, uh, that's where I was set up, that was where I was backsided at. I was using a Seco minus 30 millimeter prism and my rod height was five foot. See there, five foot. If I open up number two and look, there's my azimuth, two to one. That's the shot that I actually took. Two to 103, which was the first one, you'll notice that two to 103, I'm still saying raw target height, right? So all these are still saying that I've got the same, if you look, it says five foot, custom prism. All these say the same thing, that I've got I'm using a five foot rod. Well, I wasn't. I was using a, a, a six and a half foot rod with my total station. So let's go and look at two to 103. Okay, here's a trick. I can go in and manually change each one of these. 
So if I go and look, here's my target information, raw target height. I can say 6.5. And now he's using an R10 360 prism, okay? So now, recompute buttons popped up again. Now this is from 2 to 103, right? Now then, let's go down here to 2 to 103. Here's my 103. Now look at my elevations between the two. You see how they matched up now? And if we inverse in between this point to this point, you can see now my uh, grid distance is 400 and my uh, elevation difference is 9 thousandths between the two. So that fit pretty good between my GPS and my robot. But I really don't want to have to go change every single point. I mean, if they shot 50 points, you don't want to have to go in manually change every point. So let's do this. It's off early for an email. So let's go to right here. Now I'm going to select all these points. And I'm going to go in here now. And if I say 6.5. And, and what I did was I selected the first point, hit shift, and selected the second point, and it grabbed that whole group. So instead of custom prism, R10 360, just going to click somewhere. I'm going to hit F4 to recompute. Now let's go down here and look at some of these other points that were a foot and a half off. If we look, 214.06, 214.08.09, let's inverse in between, let's see what it says. And it says I am three hundredths for elevation and four hundredths for distance. So um, I fit pretty good between the two. Now here's something kind of interesting I'll show you guys. That is before I made the rod change. That is after I made the rod change. I'm just undoing and redoing. Just to show you that that foot and a half difference in height is actually changing my distance. Interesting, huh? So if you did a CSV file, you brought into CAD like I used to do all the time, and I'm sure you guys do. A lot of you probably still do that. And I just went in and said, you know what? It's supposed to be a 6.5. They were at a 5-foot rod, so I'm going to raise it up a foot and a half. Wouldn't have solved this problem. Because when you bring it into Business Center, everything's tied together through a vector line. Everything is tied together. As long as you keep everything tied together, when you move one thing, something else moves as well, right? So it's kind of like a chain reaction going on. So if you just bring it in CSV files and it's all you're working with and you're not bringing in your vector lines and your azimuth lines and all the other stuff, when you fix something, you're really not fixing it. You're, you're kind of putting a Band-Aid on it. When you bring it into the business center and you fix it this way, it fixes it. And that is the key. Okay? So, I just want to show you guys this. Um, this is one of the projects that I did. So, now if we go and look at our map, that is where I was set up at. And that's where I was getting the points where I shot the points in. So, everything looks good. So this is how you fix it. Like I said, this could be, um, this fix could have been uh, guys keyed the coordinates into the wrong projection. It could have been the guys went out there 5,000, 5,000 and you had to have another crew come back out and actually shoot it in with the GPS. You need the good control points so I can move everything over. So rather than translate and rotate in AutoCAD, this is a great way to move your points over to make things fit up. And just like I showed you, instead of using a CSV and just moving things, this fixes it. So anyways, guys, I hope you appreciated this. So like I said, this is the power hour I did for um, TBC. This is one of two. I'll do the other video um, here probably maybe in a little bit. But uh, And that's on setting up and doing a backside. If, if the crew screws that up, I'm going to show you how to fix it. So um, guys... Uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and liking. Um, helps me know the direction that I need to go. I'm, I'm working on some other videos right now while we're in quarantine. So, um, man, I, I just I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. Um, I, I just, man, I love you guys. What can I say? 
I love my subscribers. You guys are great. I love the comments. You guys are awesome. Anyways, like and subscribe. Be safe. Don't catch any critters out there. Wash your hands. God bless, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot, guys.